very warm welcome to all our viewers. We are here today with Desiree from Our Lady of the Rosary High School, Donapol. And I'm pretty much looking forward to this very exciting conversation. Hi, Desiree. Hello. Welcome. So, um, as you know, we're having conversations with head boys and head girls uh, all across Goa. Considering yours is an all-girls school, you'll only have a head girl. So, is there just one head girl or multiple? Uh, there's only one head girl and one assistant head girl. And after that, we have our usual house captains and other leaders. Perfect. So, the council seems to be big a number, but we only have Desiree here. We'll get to the council later. So, if there are five words to describe you, what would those words be? Five words that I would describe myself as yes. confident, hardworking, responsible, mm, punctual, and organized. Wow, okay, that's, that's a lot of good qualities in one person. Uh, were you always organized? Uh, were you always responsible? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, previously, as a kid, I was extremely irresponsible and disorganized. Uh, but as I grew up, I realized that I needed to take charge and be responsible. And I had to get my life <laughs> organized at some point. So That's very thoughtful. At a, at, at a very early age, I'm, I don't say you're a kid anymore, you're well in your teenage, moving towards adolescence. Mm -hmm. And um, it's nice to take charge of your life at an early age. But keeping that aside, let's go to you becoming the head girl. So what is it like? What does one have to do at uh, your school to become a head girl? What's the process? Well, usually we have school elections, uh, which the, school, the students are students of the school. They vote for the future head girl or future house captain. But due to COVID, uh, this year's cabinet was selected by the headmistress and the teachers. Oh, that's nice. So in most schools, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of our viewers watching know by now, the teachers usually put the names together and then the students vote uh, later. But the teachers usually make the first assessment of who they want to be as head boy and, and head girl out of the 30 or 40 students or sometimes 60 students. They bring it down to three or four kids. So for them to have chosen you, uh, I am sure they have faith in uh, all your qualities and the amount of responsibility that you can take. How was the investiture ceremony the day you were? Uh, was it online or offline? It was offline. Uh, okay. They had called... I think they had called the 10th standards and they had invested us. Oh, yes. do you remember that moment? It was nerve-wracking? Yes, very clearly. Was it nerve-wracking? Was it Definitely. exciting? Definitely, it's a huge responsibility. Did your life change immediately after? No, okay. I wouldn't say it changed immediately, but slowly I had to be a role model, like a model student for everybody, and I had to watch myself. Make sure that the younger ones, when they look up to me, they don't take after my bad qualities, but instead look up to my good ones. Do, do you have a lot of kids walk up to you and say something like, hi, head girl, like they don't know your name, but they know that you're head girl? Yes, a lot of them. The, a, lot of that a, lot of them. a lot of that happens. And what are usual conversations, let's say, with first standard students, if you ever meet them, or second standard students, what, if they have to come to you, what would they come to you for? Uh, well, I've not really interacted with the first and second standard students a lot because, well, we've been very busy this year and usually the primary has its own cabinet. Oh, I did not know this. Oh, okay. So let's say fifth or sixth standard students. How does that go? I mean, what I'm trying to ask is, what is your interaction like with uh, kids who are not in your class, like not in your grade, not in 10th or 9th, but with the lower grades? So what is that interaction like? Well, it's usually just a friendly hi, hello, and sometimes they tell me about what's going on in their classes, uh, who's doing what, who said what, all of that. They come and they tell me, and the, it's fun. <laughs> they expect you to do something about it sometimes. If someone's being naughty, did they come and tell you, she did that, and, and, and they expect you to kind of take action about yes, it? Yes, sometimes they do. They do? But sometimes it's just ideal talk. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. Uh, it is true, even as kids, as youngsters, especially as we grow, 
we look up to the head girl and we say oh she's the head girl like you know like there's some amount of authority that goes on with her and she she walks these corridors um what about friends uh and your cabinet how did that move uh, i'm sure most of the times all the people who are on the council we know them but we never had to work so closely all the time as a team how did that come about to be well it was difficult at first because we are all individual people with our own opinions ideas but slowly we got together and we learned to put our heads together as one so that we can have a smooth and functioning cabinet so we usually hold meetings and there everybody like raises uh, their issue or whatever and well that's how we function we have like learned to gel with one another that well oh, that's nice be Uh, bringing about a forum where everybody can talk to each other is amazing. I think all of us need to take a note of this. You could be in an office situation, you could be in a household, you could be um a student ca- council, you could just be friends. It is so important to gather together and talk about important things and not so important things sometimes. But if there is something that needs to be voiced, I think it is so very important. for people to get together and voice their opinions we will take a cue from Desiree for that um now moving on to, from being the head girl to learning in this position every leadership position you're a very young leader comes with its own learnings absolutely what do you think has changed in you or you have learned since this one year has unfolded to you Well, I've learned to be a better listener and a better communicator. Also, I think I'm a little more open-minded because after listening to so many people, their problems, their opinions, I've learned to realize that maybe sometimes I'm also in the wrong and maybe what they are saying is right. So, and as any leader, you need to have good communication skills in order to solve anything so yes i see a lot has changed yes com- okay communication and perspectives let's not say good or bad i think all your ideas at 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 your age are very potent i i commend you for having very uh, graceful and clear cut thoughts uh i don't think we should look at them as right and wrong let's look at them as perspectives we can look at the same thing very differently from different angles and you're right as we grow and as a young leader having perspectives is very very important what do you think of the things that you've learned will be useful to you 5 or 10 years down the line definitely learning how to multitask because in today's world you need to know how to multitask in order to survive that's true So being a leader has taught me how to handle not only one situation but four or five situations at once. That's nice. Yes, I I do agree with you. Uh multitasking is almost a uh an unsaid requirement of people in today's day and age. You have to be. So what all are you multitasking today other than this shoot? Well, I've got tuitions after this. Wow. And well, I do have basketball practice too. So that's so, basketball, that is tuition, school, uh studio visit and I'm sure I am sure there's homework somewhere in the background. Definitely, definitely a lot of homework. A lot of homework. So yes, multitasking is something that's a new one just to keep you informed. Uh, a few of the other uh head boys and head girls who came in, uh someone said that uh one of the most important thing is to be able to make friends. when you're in a position like this you should be able to you know make friends easily and have a absolutely yeah a converse, very true. uh to be able to converse easily have good public speaking skills what you say is also true multitasking you're the first person to bring it to light so we we are learning every day here uh let's go to a little bit uh let's go to a few situations here with Desiree uh, situation number 1 to get to know you better if you could have a dinner with let's say five people okay five people uh anybody dead or living and you didn't have to worry about their food or how they'd come there just the fact that you're seated and you want these five people at a dinner with you who would these people be 
Well, first off, I would love to have dinner with Joan of Arc. Okay. Oscar Wilde. Okay. Jane Austen. Okay. Cleopatra. Oh. And well, the third, the fifth one. Mm. That's a tough one. Well, right now I really can't think of a fifth <laughs> That's person. Okay. That's so okay. The four is fine. So we're looking Joan of Arc, Cleopatra that I remember. Is it Oscar Wilde? And Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Uh, uh, oh, wow, I, I see two writers. Yes. Uh, very strong ones. I see a queen. Why Cleopatra? I'm very, very intrigued. Well, she, she was a woman in a male-dominated society. And she's an inspiration. The way she enhanced Egyptian society, she's basically a very powerful woman that I look up to. And Joan of Arc? Joan of Arc too, the way in a patriarchal society which constantly put down women, she wasn't afraid, she went, she fought and today she's a living legend. I agree with you. It, uh, I do believe from time to time, I'm a very independent woman, but I do come across, I do feel sometimes that patriarchy is somewhere around the corner and you feel the pressures and the ebbs and flow of patriarchy. But uh, to, to know and to feel and to have the knowledge that my voice will be heard and can be heard and has been heard before by so many people of these strong women does help. I agree with you to have these people. That would be a very interesting dinner. Probably the fifth seat I'll come and fill in. I'd be like, she's having you over for dinner. I'm just going to be like, I'll just, I'll just be the extra who sits there and listens to the amazing conversation that happens. Um, another one. If you were a teacher tomorrow mm -hmm. and you could teach any subject, even something that's not on your curriculum, uh, what would that subject be to the students? Definitely music. Oh, wow. Okay. Why? Because I love music. It's, I would love to teach the students how to sing, how to play the piano, the guitar, the ukulele. And I think it's something that I'm passionate about. So. You, I would love to teach you'll be able to students. teach it well. That's nice. I personally think if I ever get a chance to teach, I'm just going to sit and chat with kids. I'm just going to be like, all right, tell me. So what's on your mind today? What's happening today? Um, from what you have or what you want to teach to what you have learned, what is it that your school, Our Lady of the Rosary, Donna Paul, what is it that your school, you, you are at the brink of a farewell? I know you probably can be there for 11th and 12th too. But now you're leaving these 10 years that you've spent here. Yes. What do you think has been a, a, a subject or a training that you've received here that you are very grateful for? Probably math. Definitely math. Because, well, since I'll be taking science, it's going to be helping me quite a lot. And since my mother's also a math teacher, it's a subject that I've grown to like a lot. That's nice. Math. I would never think for a student to say math. Oh my God, you should have seen me. The word trigonometry would have me running out of the building. Like, like I would just like run out of the building at the word. Uh, I'm sure you enjoy it. I love trigonometry. I, I aspire to be you in my high school. Good luck. You should see me. I wish I had a friend like you in high school who enjoyed math. I would just like probably... I would Math probably is enjoyable one. when you understand it. When you don't though, it can get a bit frustrating. Bit? <laughs> bit is a little bit of an understatement. But okay, math. Very, very nice. Um, what do you plan to do after your 10th standard? Well... I will be taking science, as I said earlier, and I plan to do something with it, probably engineering, biomedical. Oh, that's nice. You, you, you want to get into the hard sciences, the sciences that are applicational, that is engineering. And yes. uh, that's, I'm so proud of you. Well done. Uh, to make such further off decisions. Um, now, Let's move the focus from everything that you've been, all the places you've been to all the places people are going to be in. Someone's going to become the head girl after you. Someone's going to go ahead and uh, take the position. What do you think, uh, firstly, what do you think this new head girl, not just in your school, but any other school, 
needs to train themselves for. To keep a calm mind, not to get too overwhelmed or too worried, just to be calm and keep telling yourself that it will be all right, you can do it. That's all. Did you do that a lot? A lot. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> that's 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 uh, that's very understandable when you have a competition coming on and then you have an assignment that you need to give and a project that needs to be submitted and uh, some duties that need, need to be completed you have to tell yourself to have a calm mind and what is it that you would tell the younger students maybe grade five or grade six uh, you know who are not already going to become uh, head boy and head girl everywhere, but they want to be a leader in some shape or form. They, they, they figure out that they want to be a leader. What would you ask of them? What would you suggest that they do? Well, I would first tell them to believe in themselves because if they want to be a leader, they have to have that confidence that yes, I will be a good leader. So that confidence is the key. I. That is very true, very profound actually. So underlining what uh, Desiree just said, it is true, it is true. I cannot tell you how important it is. You have to believe in yourself, believe in yourself that you can uh, ace that song on the guitar, believe in yourself that you can write that short story, believe in yourself that you can make that oil paste painting, believe in yourself that you can be a lead character in your school drama believe in yourself that you can learn math maybe 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 have a little extra faith for math but believe in yourself and uh, that's a good starting place what should young leaders possess not you as you grow further what are the qualities a young leader a leader of a nation a leader of a school a, ne a leader of an organization what do you think these leaders should have First off, they should be confident, open-minded, a good listener and a communicator, and definitely be friendly to everyone. Is it easy being friendly to everyone? No, <laughs> it is not easy. But sometimes you have to understand that everybody is living a different life and you have to be kind. I agree, everybody is having uh, their own life being played out. When we have such positions, when I was a head girl or when I took other positions in my 11th and 12th or even in my uh, college days, a lot of support came not only from the team or the cabinet members, but also those friends of mine who were not in the council, who were never monitors even. You know, they're just that steady person who you can go to and feel a lot of warmth with and, and not feel the burden of having a position. Uh, have you had friends support you and would you like to give them a shout out and uh, say hi to them? I'm sure they're listening and watching yes, you. Yes, I would. I've had a lot of them. They've been my shoulder to cry on. They've always supported me no matter what. So this is definitely a shout out to all of them. I think they know who they are. Oh, that is sweet. They know who they are. So this is this one's for you. This this is a shout out from Desiree to you. For all the times you listened to her and you were there for her uh, and you uh, you supported her, I think um, that's really important and that's helped her in the process. Um, coming to teachers and the school environment, we all are very grateful, I included, for all the years we spent. Teaching is not easy. Uh, I know they put in so many hours and they care so much for the kids. Uh, what is a good quality? What are the good qualities that teachers at your school have? They are extremely good listeners. They listen to your problems and they're willing to help you no matter what. So whatever your problem is, you go up to a teacher and she will help you no matter what. And well, they're very open minded. So whatever, even if you have a different opinion that they don't have, they will listen to you and they will see and if they are wrong they will admit it so oh, that's new yes my teachers are pretty amazing to be honest yes I, I i believe that to be we spend half of our lives of our from the age of three to 12 we spend literally half of our lives in the school and these teachers shape us and mold us and we become who uh, we are when 
you now are going to go ahead and have your farewell and you're going to have your exams come and you're going to have the most stressful time. And even more stressful than that is when the results come out. Oh my God, you do not know that. It's th that feeling is like the blood in your body doesn't know where to go. It's gushing all over. Uh, but how do you plan to relax in the summer vacations that come? Well, mm. sleep. Definitely. I'm going to catch up on my sleep. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good place to start. You'll probably be watching this in the summers and you'll be like, I should sleep. So I hope you're catching up on your sleep. But uh, sleep and what else? What, what's the plan? Reading. A lot of reading because it helps me relax. What do you read? What's, what's, what, what do you usually read? Fantasy. A lot of fantasy. Oh, that's nice. Very creative. It can be very imaginative. Uh, some people say... Some people say that Harry Potter is old school, but I think it's one of the most amazing imaginative pieces, uh, fantasy pieces that I have read. Definitely. Uh, so think. yes, um, fantasy pieces. What? What? In what genre is it? Magical? Is it um, mythological? What's? Uh, is it animals? Is it how? Or what? I think it varies for me. Okay. Because I really don't mind re reading anything. That's nice. I think reading also is something very important yes, uh, to inculcate when you want to learn more, when you want to take the science especially, and also when you want to better your communication skills. Reading really, really helps. Who at home was the most happiest when you, when you became head coach? Everyone. My entire family was thrilled for me. Oh, that's nice. Yes. We just had a, a, a head boy the other day. Uh, I believe, and he goes, uh, my sister told me to go ahead and apply to be the head boy. Like she, she really encouraged me. I said, wow, that is really nice to have encouraging family. So a lot of encouragement from yes. yours too. And no shock. They were like, yes, she was made for this. She was made for a leadership position. Well, I guess there was a little shock, but they were confident in me and they were proud of me. Very that proud. is lovely. So do you think you're going to take up a leadership position in your 12th standard? Depends. <laughs> we'll see how the future plays out. Okay. Uh, but I wish you the very, very, very best. And I hope that you have amazing journeys ahead of you. And I hope that all these leadership skills that you have learned and that you have shared with us about confidence and speaking and having patience and teamwork i hope they help you in your future the near future and the one that plays out in the long haul and best of luck i'm sure you made a very very lovely and spirited young head girl thank you thank, thank you. you thank you so much for watching and we will see you shortly with yet another young leader and they're going to tell us about the ebbs and flows and the triumphs and challenges of being in that position Thank you and see you soon.